What would you do if you found out something you cherished was possessed? Would you try and throw it away? Destroy it? Maybe sell it to some unsuspecting buyer? And how did it become haunted in the first place? Those are the questions we're going to ask as we explore those very objects. Some you might be familiar with, others so obscure that they've been lost to the sands of time until now. I'm your host, Evan O'Hare. Welcome to Haunted Objects. Today we're going to take a look at a decorative box full of mischief. So before you buy that trinket at a garage sale or accept that family inheritance, take a look at these haunted objects and decide for yourself if you believe. According to Jewish folklore, a dibbuk is a dark spirit that takes over the bodies of living people and uses them for evil. Legend has it a dibbuk can be trapped inside of a box, kept from causing mischief. Unless, that is, of course, the box is open. This little tale began several years ago when an antique box came up for sale on, of all places, eBay. The seller, an antique dealer by the name of Kevin Manis, listed it as a vintage wine cabinet that came from the estate of a woman who survived a World War II concentration camp. The listing also claimed that the first owner's granddaughter was terrified of the box and had warned him upon purchase that her grandmother said it held a dibbuk. After buying the cabinet, he was plagued by not only a series of unfortunate events, but reoccurring and terrifying nightmares of an old woman that would brutally attack him. When he startled awake, he would notice corresponding bruises on his body. This would usually be accompanied by an overpowering stench of cat urine in his home. Tragically, his mother suffered a stroke while opening the box, prompting him to finally get rid of it. The trinket of terror eventually ended up in the hands of a Missouri Medical Museum director, Jason Haxton. Initially skeptical about the powers attributed to the box, but after acquiring the box, he soon changed his mind. He himself was victim of a series of gruesome experiences, such as bleeding eyes and unexplained strange rashes. He too began to dream of being attacked by an old woman with sunken eyes, and just as Kevin would also awake with bruises on his body. Allegedly, a man died whilst the box was being stored in the basement, his body found lying beside it. Jason reportedly became so unnerved that he reached out to scientists and rabbis who instructed him to build a wooden ark lined with 24 karat gold, place the box inside, and bury it in the ground. Instructions which he followed to the letter. That is, until a special appearance on the show Deadly Possessions, where it was released from its tomb for a televised reunion between it and previous owner, Kevin. When Kevin opened the box, all the lights in the building unexplainably flashed. Strange sounds echoed around the room, and Kevin started to recite a story about a mysterious shadow man, immediately after which he began to sweat profusely whilst making whistling sounds and speaking in tongues, halted only by a fit of uncontrollable coughing. The box inspired the 2015 horror film, The Possession, produced by Sam Raimi of the Evil Dead fame, which itself was plagued with similarly unusual and sometimes frightening occurrences. Exploding lights, shadows, moaning, and chills were all commonplace on set. But the most interesting event, five days after production wrapped, all the props were destroyed in a fire when the storage house in Vancouver burned to the ground. The fire department could not determine the cause of the fire and it still remains a mystery. Is this another coincidence which keeps the box shrouded in mystery or did the box somehow orchestrate this event? 
The box was eventually purchased from Jason Hexen by a familiar name, Zach Baggins, and resides, you guessed it, in the haunted museum. The sinister nature of the box means only visitors over the age of 18 who have signed a waiver are allowed to see it. Ominous in and of itself, wouldn't you say? Or just more crafty money-grabbing showmanship. The original eBay seller, after an intensive investigation by Charles Moss, apparently confessed that the box was his own creation and that he added the new elements to the Dybbuk box story over the years to help evolve it, keep it relevant and interesting. Despite this, eyewitnesses continue to claim that during its time on display, there has been a continuation of events. People have fainted, become dizzy, and even sick. Visitors have also witnessed a shadowy cloaked figure that has been seen passing directly through the closed doors of the room where it was on display. Physical attacks have been reported with even the singer Post Malone, seemingly a victim to a run of substantial bad luck, including a car crash within a matter of weeks of coming into contact with the box. Is this a case of hysteria? The mind playing tricks? Or does a vengeful spirit reside within the box? What if it's both? And the box has somehow taken on its creator's fabricated story? Of course, it could just be a beautifully decorated harmless trinket, or one of the most haunted objects in the world. Whether the cursed objects shown this evening are of myth, urban legend, or fantastical paranormal occurrences is for you to decide. I hope I haven't left you eyeballing your shelves and contemplating your latest thrift shop purchase. But if I did, get in touch. Tell us about your possessed possession. And maybe we'll feature it right here on Haunted Objects. Thank you for listening to Haunted Objects, brought to you by Resurrection Films, hosted by Evan O'Hare, and produced by Shawnee Elise Cook, directed and edited by Jason D. Morris, written by Carly Street, Mark Francisco, and Jason D. Morris, co-produced by Troy L. Foreman and Jason Hewlett, executive produced by Resurrection Films and Berg Garabedian. Haunted Objects was originally aired on the Paranormal Network for Joe Blow Media Inc. <laughs>